Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Impact Monday. So today we're gonna to be talking about how to improve your social impact with measures, and we can give you seven different ways to do that. Um, remembering that your social impact, taking these measures to improve your social impact is how you're going to affect change in the community. So you need to know what measurements you need to have in place to gauge whether or not what you're doing is actually working for your organization and the community that you're trying to impact. So my name is Tracy V. Allen. I'm the owner of TBA Consulting Group. I help social entrepreneurs social and social enterprises and small business develop, design, build, and fund their social ventures, uh, maximizing their revenue and their social impact in the communities that they serve. So again, today we're talking about the seven impact measures that you need to have in place in order to determine whether or not your organization is actually making a change internally and externally. So let's get started. All right, so the first one that we are going to talk about, uh, let me get my stuff up here. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about is focusing on the theory of change. And the theory of change is absolutely imperative to whatever it is that you're going to be doing in your organization. If you are a social impact organization, if you're in the social impact industry, you really need to familiarize yourself with the theory of change. And I'm not gonna get too deep into it because I'll do a whole nother um, session on how the theory of change actually works. But if you know anything about the theory of change, it talks about the preconditions. So what um, currently exists that you wanna be able to change. So you need to be able to identify what the pre-existing conditions are for the change that you need to make. So of course, in order to do that, you need to do some surveys. You need to do some assessments to identify what pre-existing conditions that you have that are not working right for your organization that you're going to need to change in order to get the expected outcome. The next thing that you um, are going to do, it's very much like the logic model. Um, you're going to have your inputs. You know, what things are you going to need to make this change effective? You're going to have your processes, the steps that you're going to take in order to affect this change. You're going to have your outcomes or your outputs, right? What is the outputs? What are you gonna have that's coming out of this change? And your outcomes are gonna be the actual changes that happen. And then you're going to have your ultimate impact. The ultimate impact is always the lasting change because you can have change, change that actually just lasts for a couple of months, a couple of weeks, a couple of days, but you wanna have ultimate change and ultimate change is permanent. It continues to go through the process day after day, year after year. And even with permanent change, even when people relapse into their bad behaviors, they can self-regulate and get back to the actual change that was made through the theory of change and the practices that come along with it. So the next thing that we're going to have is create a culture of learners. You really need to create a culture of learners people who want to learn to evolve to change on a regular basis if you have a set of people who are stuck in their ways and they don't want to move beyond their current circumstances effecting change is going to be hard that means it's going to be hard for you to measure any of those changes because the people who you have in your organization or the people that you're reaching out to are not going to want to implement those change processes because change is hard. Let's be honest about that. Change is hard. So in order to have these impact measurements, you're going to have to have or create, if you don't already have it, you're going to have to create a culture of learners. And that can come through the practices of the theory of change because those, me those measurements can only come if people are actually participating in the activities that you need them to participate in so that change can be effective. 
The next thing that you're going to want to have, you're going to want to do is to invest in impact assessment. So you're going to want to be able to uh, figure out or hire someone or come up with a process how you're going to measure those impact assessments. Remember, we talked about outcomes. Outcomes are the expectations that we have for the programs and services that we offer. How are you going to assess that these outcomes have been met? What are the benchmarks for success or what are the benchmarks leading up to the outcomes being positive? So you're going to need to have those impact assessments in place so that people know what they are, how to administer them, how to interpret them and determine if they are working. Nothing can be worse than having a program or service and you have no idea how to assess whether or not this program or service is effective. Is it actually affecting the ultimate change, the ultimate outcome? not a short-term outcome because part of the process is having short-term goals, mid-level goals, and long-term goals. You want those long-term goals to become your ultimate um, impact because you want them to last over time. Remember, change is supposed to be contagious. So when you change one person's life, they're supposed to actually go on and change someone else's life and so on and so forth. So you want to be able to measure and continue to monitor that change over time. Um, you also want to garner support from your stakeholders. This is going to be very important. You need buy-in from the people who you're working with. If the people who you're working with don't understand the type of change that you're trying to affect and how that, um, that change is going to affect the internal structure of your organization and the people outside who you're trying to impact, then they're not going to want to actually do the work to get it done. So you need to have, you need to garner that support from your stakeholders. This means um, holding meetings on a regular base, basis, letting them know what it is that you are doing, how it's being done, and what the expected outcomes are going to be. The worst thing that can happen is that you are doing things in your organization and your staff, your investors, your community partners, your funders don't know and understand what it is that you are trying to do and why you're trying to do it and how it's going to have a long lasting effect on all that, all the people involved, which are those people, your staff, your customers, your um, funders, your investors, right? All of these people are considered stakeholders in impact measurements, right? Because they all have a role to pay, play in change actually happening. So you want to make sure that you have, they know what assessments that you're going to have, what the benchmarks are, what the expected outcomes are, and that you keep them abreast of what is going on on a regular basis through meetings, through emails, through reports, through um, graphics, whether you're having an infographic, but you always want to make sure that they're in the know because the worst, again, one of the worst things that can happen is that they're asked a question and they're like, a deer caught in the headlight. They have absolutely no idea how to answer that question. So make sure everybody understands the process and why the process works the way it has to work in order to garner the outcome that you're looking for. The next thing you want to do is to partake in building measurements, in um, capacity building measurements. So capacity building measurements are the things that allow your organization to grow to sustainability. So making sure that you have the right amount of staff, that your staff is fully trained, that your staff um, understands, again, the processes that the company goes through to get the desired outcome, that your staff understands who the target audience is, you know, all of the, these things that you're fully funded, that you have programs and services that uh, that appeal to the needs of the community, that you have various streams of income coming into the organization that can allow you to be sustainable, that you're not just relying on one source, that you have the impact measurements, um, assessments in place and that they're executed on a regular basis. All of these things, and you're collecting data 
all of these things come together to create um, capacity building measures, right? It's a holistic program. So everything I said here before all plays a role in building to capacity, making sure that all of the stakeholders, all of them are fully engrossed in what you're doing and they understand the process of what you're doing and they're buying into it and that you're doing those regular assessments. All right. And the next thing that you want to do is to infuse your discovery um, into your system, your assessment discoveries into your systems and processes. So every company has systems and processes for how things are done within the company right? So this is how we acquire clients. This is how we onboard those clients. This is how we determine how or what programs the clients go into. This is how we determine um, what subservices the clients need. Do we provide those subservices? If we don't, this is how we refer clients out. This is how we follow up with those clients when they, once they have been referred to another community partner. This is how the program works. This is how we assess. All of those systems and processes need to have assessments in them built into the processes did this person fill out the um, form correctly and it could be something that's done manually or something that is automatically done by a computer so you know if you are having someone do a computer program for you and it's an onboarding let's say it's an onboarding assessment and they don't fill out certain fields, does the program alert them that this is a mandatory field and it needs to be filled in and you can't move forward unless this field is filled in, right? Um, so these are just some examples of how the systems and processes will work, either human um, systems and processes through a case management or supervisory management, or it can be technology wise, but there needs to be assessments so that you make sure that all of the things that are supposed to be done within your organization are being done and being done correctly. So of course you need to know that means that you need to have manuals, right? And you need to have checklists so that people know what they're doing. They know how to do it and everything is being done effectively. Are people going to make mistakes? Absolutely, because that's who we are. We're human, to err is human. But having those impact measurements within your systems and processes and overall with all of your, uh, your stakeholders, helps to make your organization stronger. These measurements help you to make sure that you're self-regulating, that you are self-assessing on a regular basis. All right, the last one is developing a, an assessment framework. So like I talked about, um, just making sure that your framework is set up correctly. Similarly to what I just said, that you have assessments for each component, each department, each section of your business, whether it comes to marketing, when it comes to um, client acquisition, financing, uh, income re revenue generation, whatever part of your business there is, you need to have an assessment framework for each component of that business to make sure that you are actually running this business effectively and that you are affecting change in the population that you're serving. So it's both internal again and external, but these assessment frameworks, these assessment measures need to be in place to make sure that you are running a tight ship, that you are, um, that you are having the expected ultimate impact that you want to have internally and externally with the community. So those are the seven impact measurements that you want to have for your organization. So the seven steps to improving your, your, your social impact with measures, these are the measurements that you want to have in place to make sure that you are 
affecting the, the best change and the most impactful change in your organization and in your community. So if you want to get in contact with us, please make sure to reach out to us. Um, I will drop my information in the box below. We can help you to put a lot of these impact measures in place and help train you and your staff on how to actually implement them so that you are uh, being the best version of yourself in your organization that you can be and that you are affecting as much change as possible within the community that you serve. So until next time, um, next Monday, actually. Uh, bye, everyone. <laughs> are you an entrepreneur, nonprofit, social entrepreneur, or small business? Are you driven and motivated by your desires for success? Then don't waste any time. Take action now. TBA Consulting develops high-quality business plans that you can use as a blueprint for success help you stand out from your competitors, help you generate revenue, and are worthy of being funded by banks, SBA, investor, and venture capitalists. Follow your dreams and build a business that is profitable and sustainable. Start your business plan with TBA Consulting today.